What's going on folks? We have a very informative live stream for you today. I'll be following up on the FBI raid of Trump at Mar-a-Lago story. And real quick before we start our show, Miranda Devine tweeted sealed search warrant here signed by Bruce E. Reinhardt, magistrate judge for the Southern District of Florida. I cross-referenced it and found out that he does work in Florida and Politico also said who signed the warrant. One of the judges was Bruce Reinhardt. And why that's interesting is there is an Epstein connection. The Miami Herald once reported on October October 23rd, 2007, as federal prosecutors in South Florida were in the midst of tense negotiations to finalize a plea deal with accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein, a senior prosecutor in their office was quietly laying out plans to leave the U.S. Attorney's Office after 11 years. On that date, as emails were flying between Epstein's lawyers and federal prosecutors, Bruce E. Reinhardt, now a federal magistrate, opened a limited liability company in Florida that established what would become his new criminal defense practice. By the end of the year, Reinhardt had resigned his post in the Southern District. Within days, he was hired to represent several of Epstein's accused accomplices who would later, like Epstein, receive federal immunity for allegedly trafficking underage girls. Reinhardt's defection was one of the many highly unusual turns that the Epstein case took 12 years ago. So, very fascinating stuff. We're gonna talk about it now on the Dream Rare podcast. Thanks for joining live. It's the Dream Rare podcast. Welcome to the show. The way to get the news at the desk or on the road. Let's go. God is great and success in our control. The world is crazy, but we get better from obstacles. It's the Dream Rare podcast. Welcome to the show. The way to get the news at the desk or on the road. Let's go. God is great and success in our control. The world is crazy, but we get better from obstacles. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a good day. And uh, the Trump... FBI raid is in the top of the news cycle and I was waiting to try to figure out why they did it or why they said they did it and this morning it started coming out in Politico and mainstream news who uh, pushed the warrant so real quick this is Politico this morning it says who signed the warrant a source said FBI agents obtained a search warrant from a federal magistrate judge in West Palm Beach report uh, the Miami Herald's Alec Rorty Michael Wilner and Jay Weaver. According to this website, the West Palm Beach location of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida has three magistrates, Judge Bruce Reinhardt, Judge William Matthewman, and Judge Ryan McCabe. The court's database shows two recent warrant applications, both assigned to Reinhardt, were entered into the system Monday through information and the targets of those warrants are sealed. So they mentioned that they were both signed to Bruce Reinhardt. Why that's interesting, as some people saw in the um, intro, this is Miami Herald a while ago. There's an Epstein connection to Reinhardt. Uh, by the end of the year, it says the same Bruce Reinhardt had resigned from his post in the Southern District of Florida. Within days, on January 2nd, 2008, he was hired to represent several of Epstein's accused accomplices who would later, like Epstein, receive federal immunity for allegedly trafficking underage girls. Reinhardt's defection was one of the many highly unusual turns that the Epstein case took 12 years ago. Moves that could merit examination as the multimillionaire controversial non-prosecution agreement is dissected in the wake of his arrest last week on sex trafficking charges. So it's a guy, I guess the same judge that has, uh, you know, signed the warrants, allegedly, allegedly, reportedly, reportedly, is the same guy who left his post to, I guess, represent Epstein's uh, accomplices and got them pretty light charges apparently so fascinating stuff that's the Epstein connection and uh, you know I'm just gonna leave it at that that's all I know and I corroborated it with a bunch of you know mainstream media stuff Politico New York Post people are starting to talk about this anyway so I'm gonna play Trump's little campaign thing as well in a second but I want to kind of play every angle of this. On one hand, I think everybody that follows me feels like there is a double standard, right? If you're Hillary Clinton, you know, they're not so interested. Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, it seems like, you know, they're softballing these Democrats and Donald Trump seems like he's getting a raw deal, right? I think a lot of people are upset that Donald Trump is getting what they would consider political persecution and, you know, just being targeted because he's, you know, not one of them. On the other hand, I see a lot of conservatives that are saying, you know, he put Christopher Ray there. You know, he's like the FBI director that is currently running the FBI was appointed by President Donald Trump. So it's like, how many times does this guy shoot himself in the foot with bad appointees, bad advisors, you know, taking bad advice, putting bad people in there? He put a pharmacy lobbyist at the head of HHS and an FBI guy that's apparently so 
you know, uh, not a threat to the regime that Joe Biden decided to keep him. So, you know, I see both sides of the equation. There's also what I'm finding interesting is a lot of people, I looked at Joseph, or I think his name is Joel Pollack from Breitbart. He said that Trump wasn't his candidate in 2024. That wasn't his choice. But after this, it seems like a lot of people are rallying behind Trump. So whether it was purposeful or not, or random or, or un, unfair or not, it does seem like it's socially engineering people to rally behind Trump again. A lot of millions of people who were upset at his actions in 2019 and 2020 are now like, oh, you know, I guess I like him now because he's getting persecuted. So I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but I'm just weighing out all the angles of it. Uh, you know, I'm seeing a lot of people rally behind him for obvious reasons. And I do want to play his campaign. I'm going to let his whole thing play real quick. So, uh, he dropped this like a couple hours after he got raided. So this is just my question because I'm always trying to weigh out every angle of it. It's like on one hand, I do think someone said, please stop attacking Trump. I'm not attacking him. I'm literally just telling you all the angles of the equation. So if me reporting accurate information about him like bothers you, then I think you need to, you know, click the X button and go watch somebody who just like licks the dirt off his shoes. I'm literally doing reporting. I have Miami Herald Politico. I'm telling you just a, a full circle of what people are saying. I haven't even told you what I thought. I guess I just bothered you by saying he put Christopher right there. So if these facts bother you, it's bye bye. Bye bye. Go go listen to Dan Bongino or something. Trump put Christopher Ray there. Trump put a pharmacy lobbyist at the head of HHS. Do those facts hurt your feelings? Do, do you need a Trump plushie doll at night? Because you, come on, dude. I didn't even tell my, if you're mad now, just wait till I tell my opinion. But in general, he put, and I'm just weighing out all angles and what people are saying. He put out a campaign uh, sort of thing. I'm going to play this three minutes long. I just find it fascinating that as soon as he got raided, he has something in the arsenal to play out. This is like a lot of people are like, did they plan it? But I don't think so. I mean, maybe he just had a campaign uh, video that he was holding, you know, near and dear to him that he just released. Because obviously when you're Donald Trump, you have a lot of videos probably in the arsenal anyway. So anyway, you know, without further ado, here's the video that Donald Trump apparently released on True Social after he got raided very, very quickly after he got raided. I mean, shockingly fast. Here it is. We are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has the highest inflation in over 40 years where the stock market just finished the worst first half of a year in more than five decades. We are a nation that has the highest energy cost in its history, and we are no longer energy independent or energy dominant, which we were just two short years ago. We are a nation that is begging Venezuela and Saudi Arabia for oil. We are a nation that surrendered in Afghanistan, leaving behind dead soldiers, American citizens, and $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment in the world. We are a nation that allowed Russia to devastate a country, Ukraine, killing hundreds of thousands of people, and it will only get worse. We are a nation that has weaponized its law enforcement against the opposing political party like never before. We've never seen anything like this. We are a nation that no longer has a free and fair press. Fake news is about all you get. We are a nation where free speech is no longer allowed, where crime is rampant like never before, where the economy has been collapsing, where more people died of COVID in 2021 than in 2020. We are a nation that is allowing Iran to build a massive nuclear weapon and China to use the trillions and trillions of dollars it's taken from the United States to build a military to rival our own. We are a nation that over the past two years is no longer respected or listened to all around the world. And we are a nation that is hostile to liberty and freedom and faith. 
We are a nation whose economy is floundering, whose stores are not stocked, whose deliveries are not coming, and whose educational system is ranked at the bottom of every list. We are a nation that in many ways has become a joke. But soon we will have greatness again. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it is hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. There is no mountain we cannot climb. There is no summit we cannot reach. There is no challenge we cannot beat. There is no victory we cannot have. We will not bend. We will not break. We will not yield ever, ever, ever. We will never give in. We will never give up. And we will never, ever back down. We will never let you down. As long as we are confident and you know, the tyrants we are fighting do not stand even a little chance. Because we are Americans, and Americans kneel to God and God alone. And it is time to start talking about greatness for our country again. So uh, somebody said they saw that days ago. Maybe he just reused a campaign thing or something because he got raided and just used it for attention. But, uh, you know, it's definitely a good ad. I guess if someone was triggered before, now I'm going to give my opinion. They're really going to cry. I think on one hand, he's getting a raw deal with the raid. Uh, here's here's a reality of how I kind of think, though. Like, if you think about game theory, you know, or just kind of like 5D chess, as people call it, like you're always thinking move ahead. If you run for political office, this is just my opinion. You don't have to like it. Don't care. Um, if you run for political office and you say, I'm going to drain the swamp and I'm going to throw her in jail, lock her up, lock her up. You know, you're basically saying you're going to lock Hillary Clinton up. Hillary Clinton is no joke. I'm not saying you have to like her, but she's a pretty powerful political figure in America, right? So if you run on the premise of locking her up and instead of locking her up, you literally get your supporters arrested on January 6th, you lock the country down with Fauci and Dr. Burks, you end up handing the entire health department over to a pharmacy lobbyist and you run around selling Pfizer and Moderna vaccines and Johnson and Johnson vaccines. That's like literally the opposite of locking Hillary Clinton up what he did. He's like, I'm going to lock her up. And then he hands his administration over to Jared Kushner and runs his supporters and circles around him until they get arrested by the FBI. So this is just my personal opinion as somebody that is it doesn't think it's fair what happened to Donald Trump. I think this is game theory. If you literally say you're going to lock someone up and don't, they're going to try to lock you up, right? That's just like how it is. It's like being in two rival gangs and being like, I'm going to kill you, and then you don't, and then they try to kill you back. It's like, that's just how the world works. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but it's like, that's just it. You know, if you're going to run on the campaign of locking up your political enemies, and then you don't, and then they, they get power back, they're going to try to put you in jail. Like, why wouldn't they? You threaten to put them in jail for four years. So it's like, you know, as much as I feel like Donald Trump is getting a raw deal, in many ways, I feel like he's getting karma because I, I, I don't know like what he thinks he was doing. But in 2020, he handed the country over to the deep state and left us all stranded. And then, you know, threw a Hail Mary trying to tell his supporters that Mike Pence was going to do something for him and got everybody arrested. And then he turned his back on the political prisoners. I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene talks about him. Paul Gosar talks about him. You know, but he doesn't really give a crap about his political people. He didn't pardon anybody on, you know, before he left office. He had a bunch of people who got arrested following him around the Capitol and he didn't pardon a single person. And I believe, you know, following Mike Cernovich, Mike is a pretty good with law. He said Trump could have done a pardon for himself. He could have done a premature pardon. And this is what Cernovich is saying. Obviously, this is just word of mouth, but Cerno's pretty on point with this stuff. He said that he thinks that Kushner told him not to pardon himself because it would have looked bad. You know, the media would have made fun of you and called you a fascist. They already do that. So it's like, in many ways, I feel like, you know, Trump isn't the victim because he just made so many mistakes. He put in Christopher Ray. Like, dude, I, I, you don't get very many chances to run the country. You know, this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity to have an outsider as the president and you leave an FBI director that's so not a threat that Biden keeps him. Like, are we, this is just my personal take. 
while I will stand up for Donald Trump when he's being wrong, when he gets kicked off Twitter, when he gets raided in a weird way, you know, I will always stand there for him because I don't let my emotions get in the way and I want to be righteous regardless of whether I like somebody or not. But as a leader, I, I don't feel like he's like this innocent victim. I think he shot himself in the foot a hundred times. He threw his supporters under the bus. He threw the country under the bus. He empowered deep state people, swampers and pharmacy lobbyists to pretty much just run us dry. You know, when he talks about the economy, the first three years were amazing. The fourth year, you know, you talk about the stock market failing all. It happened during his administration, guys. 2020 was his leadership. So, you know, I don't I, I just don't see him as this massive victim. I see it as like, you know, eventually, like if you just game theory wise, if you say you're going to lock up your enemies for years, you end up empowering more of your enemies than locking them up. Then they get power back and they're pissed off at you. They're going to try to lock you up. Like, what What else do you think? You know, if, you, if you're if you not going to lock Hillary Clinton up, don't say you're going to. If you're going to lock her up, then you could say it, but you got to do it. You can't say it and not do it. And no offense, but this this to me seems like Trump's whole thing. All Like, he did a lot of things, but he also talked a lot of things that he never did. You know, so I don't know. I find it just very fascinating that, uh, you know, this is all happening and now people are rallying behind him again. Again, and we'll see what they do. I mean, hopefully they don't throw him in jail. I think it would be political persecution. I'm not supporting of it. You know, I think they tried to frame him the entire time from the Russia collusion scam to everything. I mean, everything they did was like, you know, trying to frame him in a negative light. I just personally believe he lost favor with God in America when he decided to join them and run around the country and be a vaccine salesman. So I don't I don't know what he thought was going to happen, but at a certain point, I think he needs to take a little accountability uh, for this. Now, how people are reacting, I find it interesting because now, once again, you know, he has framed himself as the victim or the FBI by raiding him has made him a, a martyr and a victim. So now you have millions of people who were kind of like iffy about him that are now rallying behind him and, you know, making him an even bigger front runner for 2024. So. I'm looking at all angles of this. I definitely think it's it's a political persecution. I think they're doing him dirty, but I just have a really hard time seeing him as this massive victim. It, you know, if he never was in office or something, it's one thing, but I can count on like, you know, I would need more than two hands to count all the terrible appointees he, he put in and he's being literally persecuted by people he put in. So I don't I don't know. It's just it's just hard for me to feel that bad. But at the same time, I'm going to, you know, stand up for him and do it's right. I just I, I don't I, I just don't know where the next four or five years are going. Uh, I'm going to put some of your comments on. Let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me, because I, uh, I do want to get some of your takes. I guess I'll say this too, like, you know, before the COVID lockdowns, which I'm not saying were Trump's fault, like it's not like he created COVID, it happened all over the world. You look at the energy prices rising, it's happening everywhere. It's not just America. So yeah, we could obviously blame Biden. He's partially responsible. If you don't like Trump, you could blame Trump for certain things. But if you look at the world, it's happening everywhere. So I mean, it's a deeper issue than just America. But on that note, you know, he was running in 2020. It was keep America great because America was great. And then he had to switch his campaign slogan to make America great again because America wasn't great anymore after all the lockdowns. So, you know, now you see his campaign ad and he's saying, you know, America sucks basically. And like, I, I'm going to make it better again. It's like he I mean, people could get mad at me and stuff, but he failed his first term. He failed to make it great again. He almost did and he fell way short. So now instead of running on Keep America Great, he has to switch it up to oh, I'm going to make it better again. It's like you had four years and you didn't do that. So, I mean, you did it for a couple of years, but the fourth quarter is what matters. And if you throw 50 interceptions in the fourth quarter and then forget to pardon yourself or your supporters, and then you put an FBI director in that's persecuting you and you put in a pharmacy lobbyist and, and surround yourself by a bunch of like vaccine people, you know, I, I don't know. Like it, to me, it just seems like a big show. It just seems like a big circus where I, I just don't see in the end that people see but we'll see someone said he failed last year because of Fauci yeah but here's here's my personal take and I, I know people don't have to agree with it but you know when when conservatives talk to minority America black America they keep it really raw and they say you know you got to have some self-accountability and you can't play the victim right that's the whole Brexit like message is like don't play the victim if you're black 
you have to take accountability for your life. And it's a great message. I love that conservatives say that to black America. But here's the thing, when it comes to Trump, those same people that are telling black America to not play the victim are constantly playing the victim. Like on one hand, Donald Trump is this genius five dimensional chess wizard who's got it all figured out. On another hand, he has the you know foolishness of, of a two year old baby. And he, although he's such a smart leader and the best leader we've ever seen, he's also simultaneously like the most foolish person in the MAGA movement who can't seem to figure out who's loyal and not. He fires Steve Bannon and surrounds himself by Jared Kushner and vaccine salesmen. But it's but it's not his fault. You know what I'm saying? He lo he helps lock down the country, extends it, works with Fauci and Burks for three months, but it's not his fault. You know, the election goes awry in November and he helped pave the way for the election to go wrong, but it's not his fault. He doesn't pardon his supporters, but it's not his fault. He doesn't pardon himself, but it's not his fault. He puts a pharmacy lobby in, but it's not his fault. He puts an FBI director in, but it's not his fault. It's like, you know, everybody if you're going to tell black people to not to not play the victim, people in MAGA got to stop playing the victim, because in my opinion, I mean, everybody's going to tell you it's so cool because you're at a Trump rally. But in reality, no offense, it's pathetic. I mean, it to me from the outside in, like it's pathetic to me. It's like everybody acts like they're they're they they have no accountability for anything. And Trump is just this big victim who, who who's just never does anything wrong. But if he does, it's OK. It's like, you know. It's time to uh, practice what people preach and, and stop playing the victim so much. Yes, the election of November went awry. I don't personally believe it was 100% fair, but to act as if Trump's the innocent victim of 2020, that's a brainwashing tactic in himself. Trump knows how to just take zero accountability and just throw anybody under the bus, throw Bannon under the bus, throw supporters under the bus, throw Pence under the bus. And I don't even like Pence. It's like Trump is like a professional take no accountability and just run people in circles. So, you know, if you're going to tell black people to take accountability and not play the victim, then why is MAGA playing such a hard victim on all this stuff? I'm not saying to say it's right. It's not right. But I like the Matt Walsh approach, the Jesse Kelly approach of people who are big Trump, you know, people, big MAGA people. But at the same time, they're like, hey, you know, like someone was like, oh, uh, Will Chamberlain posted on Twitter. He said, you know, Democrats are acting like Republicans are never going to get back in power. And Matt Walsh retweeted him and he's like, no, Democrats are acting like when Republicans get back in power, they're not going to do anything. And they're probably right. You know, I like that approach a little bit more where it's like I agree with Matt Walsh on a lot where he's like, no, Democrats are doing what they're doing when they have power. They use it when Republicans have power. They you know, employ a bunch of dummies and do nothing. So Democrats are probably like laughing like, yeah, we know Republicans aren't going to do anything. We know they're going to get power and just make excuses and they don't care. They actually go play to win like Republicans play to lose. So I don't know. Someone said just like any other politician. So what's your point? I don't I mean, I don't know what's your point. I'm going to put some comments on. Let's see. Can Trump sue the FBI? Said somebody. Maybe. I mean, it's probably pretty tough to sue the government, but I, I don't know. I guess we're going to have to find out why they raided and what's their excuse. I'm guessing it has something to do with January 6th. They're acting as if this is like, you know, the worst thing in the world. And I, ha I have to say this. Um, I think the FBI and the government is overreacting to January 6th. I think they're you know, trying to purposely treat it like it's the worst thing that's ever happened ever so they can persecute their political enemies. I mean, that's obvious. I agree with everybody on that. But here's the difference. Like if I'm the and people can hate me for this. I don't really care if I'm the quarterback of a team and I throw five interceptions in the fourth quarter. I'm not going to sit and blame everybody else. I'm going to say, listen, yes, we lost. Yes, certain things were not fair. The ref made a few bad calls, but I take at least partial responsibility for the loss because I'm the leader. That's what you do. If you're Tom Brady and you lose, you don't blame the offensive line. You blame yourself because you're the leader. So although I personally don't think Donald Trump should be arrested for January 6th, I don't think he should be charged. I don't think he technically did anything illegal. If you look at his speech and what he said, he wasn't telling people to invade or do violence. So I'm not saying Trump should be charged, but as a leader of a movement, he should be embarrassed because he set his supporters up for failure. You know, he didn't want to accept the election results, which is fine. He didn't get the results that he went what he wanted, which was unfortunate. So instead of figuring out what he could actually do, he decided to have a big crybaby fest in the middle of Washington with no aim. You know, like, let me get all my pissed off supporters here that are all upset about the election that think I have some sort of secret plan that I don't 
probably over 50% of people there thought he had a secret plan, you know, because they bought into that nonsense. And then he threw Mike Pence under the bus and said, Mike Pence, if you don't do something about this, what do you guys think Mike Pence can do? This was always a lie. It's like he could send the electorates back to Pennsylvania. They already sent them in. What You know, if they wanted to switch them up, they could have done it before. Everybody was just lying to you because no one wanted to take accountability. Mike Pence can't change the results of the election. What he could have done was something that would have been unprecedented and send the electorates back to Pennsylvania. If and But Pennsylvania, they sent them in and then everybody got pissed at Pennsylvania. So then the Pennsylvania people were like, oh yeah, send them back to me. If you wanted to change the results, which you probably can't even do anyway, you would have done it first. You don't need it to be back and forth like a ping pong between you and Mike Pence. It was a total joke, but here's the thing. I don't think Trump should be arrested or raided by the FBI, but to act as if he's some innocent victim, he's a quarterback with no plan. He threw 20 interceptions in the fourth quarter, ended up being a vaccine salesman, put a bunch of swampers in and couldn't accept the results, although I don't think they were fair, and decided to just run his, you know, throw his own supporters under the bus, like, come follow me, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm out, peace. And then everybody you know, didn't know what to do. And some people did some stupid stuff. And now we're all getting blamed for it. So it's like you can only throw other people under the bus for so long. Steve Bannon, in my opinion, is like the most loyal Trump supporter, probably one of the best people Trump's ever had in his administration. And when Trump fired Steve Bannon, he didn't have the decency to be like, okay, Steve, appreciate I appreciate you helping me win in 2016, which Steve Bannon did. Say what you want about Steve Bannon. He helped Trump win. He's definitely part of the win. And Trump's like, you're crying like a baby, you're a loser, you're ugly. Like, Trump treats him like garbage. This is how he treats everybody. It's like, I'm fine with treating the enemy like garbage, but when you treat your most loyal supporters and people who helped you win like garbage, you know, it's only a matter of time until, you know, you run out of room to sacrifice all the people around you. Someone said, sloppy Steve. I mean, it was funny, but I, I mean, you know, Steve Bannon is a super loyal Trump supporter. Why would you treat your most loyal people like that? Someone said anomaly shut up and do something. I'm doing what I think is appropriate. I just did a great live stream on George Soros yesterday. That's I think more, uh, you know, more thorough than anything anyone's ever done. I'm doing what I want. If you're upset by what I'm saying, then I don't know what to tell you. Go to a Trump rally, buy a MAGA hat and run circles around the vaccine salesman. But um, someone said anomaly still in California. I mean, you guys could get mad at me and say I'm in, yeah, I mean, Florida, the great free state where CPAC has to have forced masking, the great free state where, you know, Trump gets raided by the FBI. You could make fun of me for being in California, but what does that say if the f free state of Florida, Trump's still getting, you know, raided at Mar-a-Lago? I'm not saying it's good, but it's like, you know, this whole country is kind of in shambles. It's not like it is what it is. I'd rather live where I live in California than live in like Orlando or Miami. No offense. That's just a personal preference. So if what I'm saying makes you so mad, that's fine. But someone said anomaly showing his true colors. I've been saying this for two, two or three years. I'm Listen, if you guys just want to emotionally get upset around Donald Trump, you'll probably be lured into another FBI trap like January 6th. You got people now tweeting civil war, civil. Guys, they want you to do this. They're probably purposely doing this to have another January 6th event. So a bunch of pissed off Trump supporters do something stupid to get everyone else in trouble and get the FBI on your ass for another six years. So it's like either you want to logically think about what's going on. Be honest, stand up with Donald Trump and plan for the future. Or you just want to get pissed off at me and go follow the vaccine salesman to another, you know, FBI setup event. I'm sorry, but you can you can hate on me. My track record's good. How many people in my position were at January 6 and luring people to the big setup like all of them? I didn't go because I have intuition. I'm like, something doesn't seem right here. I don't I don't agree with the narrative going on. I'm not saying I think the election was perfect, but I don't, I'm not a follower. I don't just follow people to the Capitol when they tell me to go and they yell at me. I'm like, something doesn't seem right about this. I can't put my finger on it, but something doesn't seem right. And thank God I had the intuition to do that. Because whether you guys want to realize it or not, I'm sure they were trying to set me up just like they were trying to set you up. I unfortunately got a call from law enforcement over the Capitol. So when everybody else does stupid shit, it affects me and they're trying to drag me into it. So if they were going to call, I'm, I'm one of the as far as I know, 
I'm one of the few people who got a phone call that wasn't even there. I wasn't even in Washington. So could you imagine if I was at Washington, I'd probably be facing a lawsuit or something, you know, some sort of charge. So it's like I'm just trying to actually play 5D chess and do real reporting and real stuff, not just emotionally get pissed off and run into an FBI trap for the next 10 years. It's like this is all I'm telling people. I'm not saying that Trump should be charged. I'm not saying he should be raided. I'm just saying as a leader, he has some responsibility to think about what he's doing. But I don't think he does. I think he, you know, at a certain point, I think January 6th was a mess. I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm not saying he should be charged. But this is why I'm getting annoyed by the MAGA movement. I've been saying it for two years. It's not because I don't like what conservatives do. I like the idea of what Trump was trying to do. But if people are like literally just like, oh, you can't question it. We're just going to get ticked off and run circles around them. It's like, I don't want to do that. So I, I, have, I have nothing in common with that anymore. Not nothing in common, but it's like that. Is, is that the MAGA movement? Trump trips over his feet. He sells vaccines. You make excuses for him. He pushes narratives and you just follow his narrative. It's like it, you're going to get in trouble again. You know what I'm saying? It's like aimless. Uh, you know, if you're the quarterback, I think you have the responsibility to you know, have a plan and not just aimlessly run your people in circles, but whatever. Someone said Teflon Don 2024. This will probably help him, no doubt, no question. Um, if he could promise me that he wasn't going to put in a bunch of pharmacy lobbyists at the head of the health department and screw us over, I would, you know, consider letting him run. But I just, I don't think, I don't think he needs to do that. I think people will just elect him anyway. So there's no real, uh, you know, there's, let me see. You are. I'm going to put some comments on. You are being a sheep. Wake up. If this doesn't concern you, there's no hope for America. I don't know if you're talking to me or someone else, but uh, I'm not saying this doesn't concern me. I didn't say that. It does concern me. A lot of things concern me. The lockdowns concern me. Uh, you know, Operation Warp Speed concerns me. Mandates concern me. FBI uh, over politicization of stuff concern. It all concerns me. But what you have to understand is this isn't new. And I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's like, do you know how many Trump supporters had their houses raided by the FBI? Lots of them over January 6th. So it's like, he's the leader of the movement. No, he's not deserving, but for so long, I feel like he just throws his own supporters under the bus. And it's like, I'm not saying it should happen, but what Trump is suffering now is what dozens of his most loyal supporters have been suffering over the last two years. And he doesn't care about them at all. So I'm just, I'm just saying at a certain point, it's karma. Not that it's deserving, but when you're the leader of a movement who keeps screwing people over, eventually you're going to get screwed over. You can't always just throw Mike Pence under the bus or Steve Bannon under the bus. I don't even like Mike Pence. I like Steve Bannon more, but it's like, this is what Trump does to people loyal around him, and he follows Kushner and Christopher Ray. And at a certain point, your decisions equal your reality. Like, how long, you know? I'm just being real. Someone said you lost me. I don't care. I don't care if I lost you. Then click the X. Uh, I'm just game theory wise. Like if I say I'm going to throw someone in prison, I'm not going to say it unless I'm going to do it. If I run around the country saying lock her up for four years and I don't lock her up, they're going to come for you. This is just, like this is the five dimensional chess you guys are talking about. If Republicans ever get in power again, I hope they do. You better demand that they do something. I'm just being completely transparent, whether it's Trump or DeSantis or Rand Paul or somebody way worse. You know, you guys got to stop just playing like your cheerleaders. Like next time Trump's in office, don't allow him to do nothing. You could say what you want, but he failed. He failed himself. He failed you. He failed the country. And how he thanked you in 2021 is he ran around Fox News and Newsmax selling Big Pharma's vaccine and covering up Big Pharma side effects for Big Pharma. He's a sleaze, but whatever. You know, he's better than Joe Biden. He did a few good things with judges or whatever. But in general, he failed. If you don't want to say that, I don't care. I don't want another four years years of Republican Party doing nothing, the next time they get power, whether it's Trump or not, you better stop just cheerleading and make sure he actually does something. They're adding 87,000 IRS agents. You know, they're, they're persecuting Trump supporters. They're trying to persecute me. You know, I'm, it's not like I think it's good. I've already been, you know, in trouble because of Donald Trump and all the bullshit they did in January 6th. Not in huge trouble, but more shit than I want to deal with because of everybody else's stupid shit. So I'm not saying I, I agree with this. I am concerned and it's affected me before it even affected Trump that to that extent. So, you know, I'm just saying next time they get in office, maybe they should actually do something instead of selling vaccines, working for Fauci and employing a bunch of people who hate us. Is that too much to ask for?
I can't do that. I have to just sit here and act like he's some big dummy victim when he literally had office for four years and failed. No, this is me being a nice guy saying next time he gets an office or someone else, you better stop treating him like a false idol and make sure he actually does something because they didn't do enough. And if you think they did do enough, you don't deserve a success. You know, if you don't admit that it was a failure last time, then why, you know, you don't deserve success. Someone said Anomaly's kind of freaking me out with his obsession on hating Trump. I don't hate Trump. The truth sounds like hate speech when you hate the truth. You hate the truth about Trump because it doesn't line up to your idol worship. So you consider it hate speech. There's nothing hateful about what I'm saying. It's a fact. If you don't want to act like Trump sold vaccines, you're a liar. If you don't want to act like Trump didn't employ pharmacy lobbyists, you're a liar. If you don't want to act like Trump put Christopher Ray there, you're a liar. So I don't know. Does does the truth bother you? I, I don't know. Like, do you want me to just sit with pom poms in my hand and tell you that he's this big, innocent victim who's the smartest person in the world, but simultaneously really foolish? Someone said he's a sleaze. I think he's a sleaze bag for selling vaccines for big pharma. I think he's a sleaze bag for covering for Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer and Moderna. We're out here busting our ass doing all this reporting, trying to show who they really are and what they're really doing and the real efficacy and the real data. And Donald Trump, yes, I believe he's a sleaze bag, is on stage at MAGA rallies telling people it's the greatest human achievement in modern history. It saved the world. It saved 50 million deaths. Bringing up the Johnson and Johnson, you know, a, a, a lady who owns the company. He's a big pharma cover up operative at this point, Donald Trump. So, yeah, I. I think he's a sleazebag. Do you know why? Because I'm a strong American man. I'm not a pussy. I'm not a pushover. I'm not just a cheerleader. I'm not a loser. I have respect for myself and my country. So when I watch a controlled opposition liar go on stage and cover up for big pharma as big pharma is destroying our country and killing millions of kids with their products. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna say something about it, okay? This isn't the Mark Levin show. This isn't the Dan Bongino show. I don't just lick dirt off Donald Trump's shoes for a bunch of money. I tell you the truth. Yes, it's very sleazy what he did in 2021. Running around the country, covering up for big pharma, selling vaccines, overselling the mRNA vaccines, and trying to brainwash his public into thinking it was the greatest human achievement in modern history. Sleazy, fact check, sleaze. If, does that bother you? I don't care. Watch one of these other con artists who tell you exactly what you want to hear and never do anything about it. This isn't Jim Jordan, okay? I don't take money from Google and then say I'm going to fight Google. I don't take donations from Google. I mean, yeah, I make money off YouTube, but it's not like a donation to my freaking political campaign. That's Jim Jordan. You want to listen to Jim Jordan? You know what he does? Talk. That's what he does. Talk, 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 talk. That's what they all do. They're a bunch of big talkers. They're a bunch of big phonies. They like stuff like this. Oh, I'm a, oh no, now I could get a bunch of donations money and, and now I'll win the election. It's a big show, but if you like it, go buy into it. This, this is not this is not Fox News, okay? Clint said, what's the primary oath of our military? Why did they abandon us in that oath? Our entire military is treasonous. Well, uh, I'm not going to say our entire military is treasonous. That's not true, but I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, a lot of people are abandoning a lot of oaths, you know? A lot of people are not upholding what they, what they promised to do, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I'm going to put a few more comments on the stage and I'm going to keep it moving. Overall, I'm just saying uh, I don't agree with what's happening. I think it's wrong, but I think this is extra motivation like to actually do something next time people are in office and also take accountability. I just I don't I don't think the Republicans are this massive victim. If Republicans lost in 2016 and Democrats have been just persecuting us for the last 20 years, then I would be like, yes, Republic the Republican Party is the victim. I think you're the victim, not like that you should cry about it, but I think Trump supporters are the victim. I think conservative voters are the victim. I don't think the Republican Party, including Trump, are the victim because they had office for four years and they prior, guys, Trump passed a, an executive order to pass Israeli speech loyalty laws on college campuses. He passed an executive order to bring the entire government together to modernize vaccines. You know, if he has the time to do that, but he doesn't have the time to, you know, it's a, I, I don't think they're the victim. What I'm saying is you're the victim, not them. The, you know, Kevin McCarthy's not the victim. Tim Scott's not the victim. Jim Jordan's not the victim. They're the problem. You know, they're the people that just pretend like they're going to do something and never do anything. They had office for four years. They talked a big game and they set us up for failure. I'm, you can get mad at what I'm saying, but this is just how the world works. If you say lock her up and I'm going to lock her up, 
you better actually lock her up or your ass is gonna get locked up or they're gonna try to lock you up. Why wouldn't they? You threatened to lock them up for four years and you didn't do shit. You worked with them and, and helped them and then they got power and they're pissed off. Now they're trying to do what Trump said he's gonna do, duh. I'm just saying either don't say you're gonna lock her up and don't do it or say you're gonna lock her up and do it. You can't say stuff like that to the Clintons and act like nothing's gonna happen. You get what I'm saying? It's like follow through or don't play the victim. That's uh, it's a tough truth. Uh, someone said, people don't wanna believe that things can get uh, uglier, thanks for being honest. Yeah, I'm not a fear monger, but I, I, of course they could, but they could also get better. I'm just saying, in order for them to get better, the Republican base needs to be a little bit tougher on the, on the people involved. But someone said, bingo, it's a pickle. There's a video of Trump and Klaus Schwab pretty much tells you. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, he definitely says he's doing a good job. I. You know, people are going to get upset, but I think on one hand, Trump is an anomaly. You know, he does a lot of good things. He he failed in a lot of cases, but he also did a lot. I don't I can't tell if it's like a big show or he just has some character flaws that he keeps like messing up or it's more hard than I think. I'm not you know, I'm not going to overdo it. But yeah, at the end of the day, if you take your emotions out of it, whether you love or hate the guy and you look at what he did, I think it's fair to say he's better than Joe Biden. He had a lot of policies that were good, but when push came to shove, he flopped like a fish, in my opinion. I mean, 2020 was the big thing. You know, first quarter, great. Second quarter, great. Third quarter, great. Fourth quarter, I feel like he threw 50 interceptions and left us down 60 points. I've never lost more freedom, more liberty, more control over my sovereignty than when Trump was in office in 2020. I mean, that was one of the worst years for American liberty on record. And it took him a long time to figure out what was going on. And in 2021, he ran around the country selling vaccines. I, I don't I don't know where people think this is going, but I'm just gonna say it. I disagree 1v1 in a, in a, in a thumb war, sure. It's all good though. I mean, we'll see, we'll see what he does if he gets back into office, but I hope people don't just cheer and ask him to do stuff or demand he does stuff. I'm going to I'm going to put my weight behind people like Matt Walsh and Jesse Kelly and even Cerno where it's like these are people who have connections in the Trump campaign but they push Trump to be better, you know? I like those people. There's a lot of people that are just grifting off Trump. Like people say, oh, you grifted off Trump. No, I made a song because I was inspired by it. I supported him in thousands of videos because it was the right thing to do. But it's clearly not a grift. If I grifted off him, I'd just sell MAGA gear, make $100,000 and tell you, you know, his shit doesn't stink. That's what grifting looks like. It's like it's not grifting to be like, I'm OK with him winning the election again, but people got to you know, be like, okay, yes, this is all happening. Yes, this is bad. Yes, you don't deserve this. But at the same time, you did kind of ask for it. Did you not? No. Would would you? This might be the craziest thing that people don't want to hear, but it's like, th this is how the world works. It's like if you're fighting with a mob boss and you say you're going to do some crazy crap to him and you don't, they're going to do it back to you. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm the type, I kind of just put my head down and work and I try not to get involved in certain things because if I ever said I was going to lock up Hillary Clinton, I wouldn't. But it's like if I said that, I'd be like, shit, I better do it or else they're going to come for me. You know, isn't that kind of how things work? Or no, Trump should just say lock her up 100 times, but not do it. But that's OK, because nothing's, you know, he's just simultaneously the strong, powerful leader who fell short, who shouldn't ever think about anything he does. It's almost like people are people are hurting Trump, in my opinion, by telling him like he doesn't have to do anything like it's almost like telling your friend like to go, you know, jump rope on on train tracks. You know, it's like it's yeah, you could say to do that. But at the end of the day, a nice friend will be like, dude, don't do that. You know, that's a bad idea. So I think people could frame it like I'm so mean, but I think I'm trying to help Trump. It's like, bro, if you get back in office, you you got to you got to think about who you're surrounding yourself by. But I don't know for sure what's going on, but I think he he values people like Jared Kushner like highly. You know what I'm saying? And he he gets deceived quite easily. So we'll see what happens. Someone said they'll be knocking down, breaking down your door. What you don't understand, Connie, is they already tried to essentially do that. I'm not going to get into specifics, but they've called people in my family and basically already threatened to do that to me because of Trump's stupid shit and Trump supporters' stupid shit. So I've already experienced that, right? 
What you don't understand is I've already experienced that. My friends have had their homes raided by the FBI already. So it's like when the great vaccine salesman who's setting all the supporter up is getting everybody else in trouble, including almost me, you know, I've already semi experienced that. They didn't break down my door, but I've gotten phone calls where they had basically threatened to come to my family's house. They've already done this to me over the January 6th shit. And I wasn't even there and I wasn't even supporting it. So what you don't understand is like every time Trump does some stupid ass shit and sometimes they're already trying to make me a part of it. They're already trying to blame me and see what I know and stuff. So it's like, you know, uh, this isn't a foreign concept to me what's going on to Trump because essentially in, in a lesser form, it's already happened to dozens of people who supported Trump. It's already going on. At what point does he realize that he needs to think about what he does instead of running people in circles? He's like sacrificing his own supporters like me, 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 me. It's like, yeah, bro, they're going to come for you too. Someone said they just tried to intimidate you. I don't care. Do I look scared? Does it bother me? I'm just telling you the, the truth. I'm just being honest. Someone said, see ya. Bye, bro. Someone said we're living under communi communism at this point. It's getting bad, but it's just hard for me to play the vic, like to have the Republican Party play the victim. Did they not do communism in 2020? Like, w what do you think happened when the country locked down? Republicans were totally fine with it for at least a month or two. And then when Georgia started opening up, Trump was complaining. He's complaining about Sweden. He's running around bragging about giving big pharma tens of billions of dollars. What is that? What You get what I'm saying? It's like, what I, I'm not saying what's going on is deserved, but it's like in game theory, the Republicans failed miserably in 2019 and 2020, miserably. They prioritized speech laws and big pharma sellouts. Like they did more for big pharma via executive order in 2019, 2020, 2021 than any president's done in recent history. What, like, what do you think's gonna happen when you let Fauci lock the country down and you give Big Pharma a bunch of money? You think we're gonna be a great country? No, of course, we're gonna go to shit. So I'm just, I'm respectfully, or maybe not respectfully, asking the Republican Party to stop playing victim and do something for once. You know, Kevin McCarthy's on Twitter. I'm gonna do something. Are you, bro? Maybe he will. Maybe he really will. Maybe this was the final straw. Maybe this will be the straw that broke the camel's back that gets the Republican Party to actually do something. But for now, it's all a big act with Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump and Tim Scott and Jim Jordan. And, you know, the only ones who I actually like are like Rand Paul, Thomas Massey. You know, Marjorie Taylor Greene's pretty wild in a funny way, in a fun way. But besides that, it's like, oh, you know, they remind me of like, you know, we're going to get you next time. But they never do. So I'm like. I'm just hoping that they actually do next time. Maybe maybe I'm wrong for feeling this way or maybe I could have, uh, you know, communicated it better. But I just I want Republicans to tell the party to actually do something next time and not and not just like softball them, because I I just don't know. I don't I don't know why the Republicans thought this wasn't going to happen like I. As soon as the January 6th thing happened, I already saw the writing on the wall. Like, I'm not saying it's Trump's fault, like he shouldn't be charged, but as a guy who's a 5D chess player, that was a stupid move, aimless move. The pros of that were non-existent and the cons were extraordinary. I already knew like, dude, something, like they're gonna try to set people up, whatever. So now once they did that, I started realizing once they, like, I'm like, oh, they're now gonna paint this as, you know, Donald Trump and the insurrectionist and anybody who's conservative and Republican and anybody like Anomaly who does honest analysis, you know, they're a threat to democracy. And now, you know, we have to sick the intelligence communities on them. Like that was the worst thing he could have possibly done before he left office. You know what I'm saying? You're leaving office. And now as a president, after all this bullshit you did with Big Pharma, your big present to your supporters is getting everybody in trouble. So now we have four years of political persecution. I'm not saying he deserves to be charged for it, but as a leader, it was a shitty, selfish move. He wanted to be president. He wanted the attention. He wanted to blame Mike Pence at the last second and make it seem like he could do something when he probably couldn't. And everybody believed it because everybody licks the dirt off Trump's shoes. So they went to the event. Many people got in trouble. Many people got charged. Many people got in trouble that didn't even do anything illegal or wrong because it was just a bad, you know, uh, 
I would say like strategic decisions. Strategically, there was like very little upside and huge downside and the huge downside occurred and now everybody has to suffer for the next three years. He could have pardoned somebody cool. He could have pardoned his own supporters. He could have even prematurely pardoned himself, but he didn't do any of that. So that was his leaving gift. It was like, here, everybody gets set up by the FBI. Okay, enjoy Joe Biden. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna run around the country and sell vaccines. And that's what he did in 2021. He didn't do 20 minute speeches saying his political prisoners are getting in trouble. He didn't do big speeches talking about the mandates or talking about all the tyranny. He did all his big speeches dedicated to shilling for big pharma and trying to brainwash his supporters into thinking Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson are the greatest thing on earth. That's what he did. And this is the guy you want back? Yeah, I'll stand up for when he gets raided because it's wrong. I, I'm not emotional. It's wrong what they're doing to him. It's not fair and it's not just. But that's the guy that everybody's gonna beg for back now? You know, next time you get in trouble, don't come crying to me because it's just gonna keep happening over and over again. I just don't understand what's going on, but whatever. Someone said 2016. Someone said agree but disagree too. That's fine. It's all good. I'm just like, I don't know where people think this is going. I don't know. But if that's if that's good leadership to you, putting in a director that ends up coming for you, you know, running people in circles to the point where everybody gets in trouble and then using your platform in 2021 to sell vaccines for big pharma like if that's if that's a great idea i don't know i personally believe in like what comes around goes around and at a certain point if that's what you're doing if you're deceiving your own base to that extent like something bad's gonna happen to you that's just how the world works but whatever i'm at the point now i mean people could get mad at this i'm at the point now where i almost feel like it was a setup from design. And maybe I'm wrong, I'm not trying to start a conspiracy theory, but it's like, let's take the Russia situation. Uh, you know, you have all these Western leaders like Biden and Buttigieg and all these people who wanna go to clean energy, clean energy, they wanna get away from gas, right? They've already said this, they're already trying to demonize oil, they already wanna change the energy system, but you know, they, they can't pass their Green New Deal. And then what happens right as all this is going on? Russia invades Ukraine and now all of a sudden gas prices are skyrocketing and tanking and it's making and they're saying go get go get an electric car and you know gas isn't worth it. I'm not saying that they purposely invaded or this was like a conspiracy but at the end of the day like what are the chances that you have all these western leaders trying to get rid of gas and now they're getting rid of gas through the through this spontaneous war that just happened to break out in Russia and Ukraine. And now, you know, Germany's suffering and we're suffering and everybody in Europe's suffering. I find it just highly suspicious that that happened at that time. I'm not saying they planned it, but I find it fascinating that Western leaders want to get rid of gas. And now they have the perfect excuse through the Russia invasion to get away from gas and push new policy. Isn't that kind of coincidental to the point where it really makes you think? I feel the same way about the January 6th event. On one hand, we could say Donald Trump's extremely unlucky. You know, that was a great rally to just blame Mike Pence and it was so great. And, you know, it wasn't and, and nothing happened. And, you know, a few people did some stupid stuff and now everybody got blamed. We can act like that's the most random thing in the world. But if you look at it from game theory, it's like Donald Trump's on his way out of office. What could be more perfect for the Biden administration than an event that makes Trump supporters look like terrorists and insurrectionists so the FBI can then start persecuting journalists, YouTubers, you know what I'm saying, random people that weren't even there and try to, you know, scare everybody and, and, and arrest certain people. Like, I'm not saying they planned it, I'm not saying Trump was in on it, but from a game theory perspective, there couldn't have possibly been a worse way to leave office than getting your supporters in trouble at the Capitol or your supporters getting in trouble by themselves, however you want to frame it. Like. Either that's the most extreme coincidence and most unfortunate mistake in the world, or people got set up. I don't, you know, I'm not saying he's in on it, but I'm just saying, I don't, you know, 
yeah, like, wow, they wanted to get rid of gas and there just happens to be a war in Russia. Perfect timing, right as COVID's ending. Maybe, sure, maybe this is all just spontaneously happening, but it's like game theory wise, I can't think of a worse way to leave your administration than all your supporters getting set up by the FBI and getting in trouble and going in the thing so they could frame it in this certain way, get everyone in trouble, get record high ratings, and now start this four year witch hunt that is more legitimate than the Russia collusion thing. Why is it more legitimate? Because the Russia thing was bullshit. So now they actually have something. If they could do what they did with the Russia thing and the Zelensky phone call, now with the actual people that went in the, the Capitol and stuff, not that there were that many, but there were some, you know, now they actually have a little bit to cling on to and they can make it a whole thing to, you know, target against conservatives. I'm not saying it was planned, but it's like, what a fantastic coincidence. You know what I'm saying? Fantastic coincidence. We didn't get pardons of great people. We didn't get a bunch of pedophiles arrested like everybody thought. The big, you know, the big boom at the end of the Trump administration was a an event that spontaneously just got the entire base in trouble for four years and potentially got Trump in trouble. I'm not saying it was planned, but it's like everything happens. It's like, you know, it's like when you say event 201 happened a year before COVID. I'm not saying they planned it, but it's like, wow, what a spawn, like all the timing of this. Donald Trump signs an executive order for Big Pharma in 2019 uh, about, you know, modernizing vaccines. And in 2020, in January, Ivanka says he's working with Moderna to make this new technology or, 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 or you know, really get it, the ball rolling with the COVID stuff. It's just like, yeah. I'm not saying it's all planned because you're not allowed to say that and I don't know that so I won't speak what I don't know but it's like all these things are just so crazy what's the chances that you're passing modernizing influenza vaccinations in 2019 and then in 2020 just a couple months later you're modernizing and pushing for the modernization of you know operation warp speed style vaccines everything just has such crazy timing to it doesn't it so that's all I'm really saying and with this raid um I'm looking at all angles of it. I'm looking at they are trying to demonize Donald Trump like they always had. They're trying to get him in trouble. He said he'd lock them up and he didn't. So now they're probably trying to lock him up. Uh, you know, they're trying to stop him probably from running in 2024, maybe. Or you look at the flip side and you could say maybe they're maybe they're trying to make him a martyr. So he does win. I don't you know, or I, I don't really know. Because on one hand, I mean, I'm going to look at it from both angles. On one hand, maybe they want him to run because he's not who we think he is. On another hand, maybe they want him to run because they think they could beat him. And they think that, you know, the only way they could raise money is if he runs and they just make it an anti-Trump campaign. Because, you know, Democrats don't really have that much to like. It's like a abortion, gun control and hating Donald Trump. That's like the big cash cow. So when a shooting happens, they raise a lot of money when a. Uh, you know, when Trump is in the, you know, does something or there's an insurrection or Charlottesville, they raise a lot of money. So, you know, maybe they want him to run uh, because they could they think they can beat him. Maybe they don't want him to run. And that's why they're persecuting him. I don't know. I'll explore all angles of it. Obviously, I have an opinion. Here's here's a good comment. We'll just kind of go off this. Someone said Kevin McCarthy undermined him. Uh, I'm trying to put it on the screen real quick. Sorry, it froze. Um, let's see if it goes on the screen. I don't know if it's going to work anymore, but there it is. Kevin McCarthy undermined him. I'm sure that that's true, um, but I went to a Trump rally in Arizona one time and Trump brought Kevin McCarthy on the stage. So it's like, if that's true that Kevin McCarthy undermined him, does he have any accountability for constantly surrounding himself by Kevin McCarthy? Like Trump has only been friends with Kevin and only elevated Kevin like you know so I'm not I'm not saying that's not true and I'm not saying Kevin McCarthy doesn't deserve accountability but like at what point are people tired of a guy who surrounds himself by people who hate him I don't like you get what I'm saying like oh man let's blame Kevin McCarthy and Christopher Ray and Bill Barr and Steve Bannon and Mike Pence and this person and Millie and you know it's like what's the common denominator there like everybody hates Mike Pence Trump put Pence there I like I I never really liked Mike Pence I mean he looks professional he's a good debater in some cases he's definitely like a stern guy I, I get his appeal I mean I definitely liked his Kamala Harris debate right he did a great job Mike Pence but when it comes to push comes to shove like he's always been an establishment politician 
So I, that this is the disconnect I'm, I, I don't understand. Like if I'm the quarterback and I hire the running back myself and the running back screws up, am I going to act like it's his fault? Like if, if I brought him on the team? You get what I'm saying? Like this is the Trump, this has become the MAGA base. It's been a, it's a bunch of victims who take no accountability. I'm not a big Pence fan, but it's like, I didn't hire Mike Pence. I would never hire somebody like Mike Pence as my vice president because I don't trust career politicians. But you know, that's what he did. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe he thought he was someone else and he's mad at him now. Or I like, you get what I'm saying? It's just hard. It's like hard for me not to at least laugh a little bit at like the hilarity of like, this game of like he's this great leader but at the same time he just constantly keeps like picking people that don't like him it like does desantis do that i i'm does desantis hire a bunch of people who hate him and, and don't agree with him probably not and i'm not saying desantis is perfect but like at what point do people address this i don't know matt walsh addresses it uh jesse kelly addresses it cernovich addresses it i address it i'm trying to think of other right wingers who address it and don't just lick his shoes I, a lot of people are starting to say that and that it's not a mean thing but it's like bro next time you run like maybe maybe you should pick people that don't hate you and, and that aren't career politicians i don't know maybe or maybe just do the same thing someone said excellent point i appreciate it I think about this and I'm a little tough on Trump, but I think about it as like a nice thing. Like if you're running around the country selling vaccines and like you're you're ruining your legacy. Like I could act like that's amazing, but you know, history will remember that that's who you were. When push came to shove and America was suffering the most, you decided to prioritize selling overselling Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson and Johnson products. You decided to basically cover up the negatives of those and just act like it's so great. Like, is that good? I mean, as somebody who doesn't hate Trump, I, I I think it's nice to be like, bro, you're ruining your entire legacy. Like you went from a hero to a sleaze. You know what I'm saying? You, like you constantly hire people that persecute you and your supporters. And at a certain point, I, I pray that you don't do that. If you run again, I would be fine. Like people think I'm emotional. My throat hurts a little today, I apologize. I would be fine with Donald Trump running again if he was proving that he was different. You know, this is my whole thing. I know politics is politics. I don't want to run for office. I don't want, you know, I don't think the world's perfect. I don't think you can get a perfect person there. I would be fine with Trump running and winning again if he proved he wouldn't put a pharmacy lobbyist there, if he proved he wasn't friends with people like Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab, if he proved that he learned his lesson, and if he rolled out a game plan and been like, this is who I'm going to put in office. I'm going to put Marjorie Taylor Greene, or I mean, maybe not her, but you get what I'm saying? If he could be like, I've learned my lesson, I'm going to do these things, and this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to prove it, I'd be like, all right, let him get go again. But I don't, I personally don't see it yet. Um, but that could change and hopefully it will change if uh, if people do what I do and, and make it so it has to be right. It's like they only sell what you buy. So if everybody buys it, you know, this is another thing that it's going to I watch millions of people go. I didn't want them back, but now I want them back. And it's like, great. I semi feel the same way. This makes me be like, well, maybe maybe Donald Trump will come back and just go scorched earth. But I, d I don't think he's learned his lesson on who to trust and who not to trust. So his version of Scorched Earth might not be the version of Scorched Earth we want. Personally, I th this is just my take. I don't know. It's worth you know asking Trump about. I think he still trusts Jared Kushner because it's Ivanka's husband. I think he still trusts Mike Pompeo. I think he still trusts Alex Azar and his HHS pharmacy lobbyist buddies. I think that's who he trusts. I don't think Trump is gonna surround himself by righteous people who love the country. I think he's gonna surround himself by loyalists. So you'll get some good and some bad. You'll get a Dan Bongino who will do some good stuff. You'll get a Steve Bannon maybe who will do some good stuff. But then you're gonna get a Kushner and you're gonna get a, you know, a Bannon or, or a, a Pompeo. Like I like Mike Pompeo. I think he's a nice person, but I do not trust him personally. I, I think he's kind of like, you know, an establishment guy. I mean, he was a CIA director. That's just, you know, but so I, I don't think we're going to get the results that people see, but maybe who knows? I think if the base holds Trump accountable, we will. Someone said he isn't stupid. This plan is for confusion. 
Anything is possible. It could be a lot of different things. Let's get some of your takes. Whether you agree or disagree, let me know your perspective and I'm gonna put it on the screen. Or I'm gonna try to, because it's uh, it's freezing up a little bit on me, but I will try to put some of your comments on the screen. Let's see. Someone said, and the fact that this judge has a connection to Epstein should tell you everything you need to know. I mean, it definitely is uh, worth considering. It's definitely interesting. Um, all right, I'm gonna put a few comments on the screen that I'm gonna take off. Sorry, my thing's freezing a little. Someone said, let's see. Someone said, if you think Donald J. Trump is going to be on the wrong side of the new world order after the great reset is finished, you are sadly mistaken. Time will tell all, but I, I guess I just go with what I see. So on one hand, you know, he fought them. On another hand, he rolled out the red carpet for them. Time will tell all, right? My opinion doesn't matter. The truth matters. And uh, what happens in the future or the present matters. But on one hand, he's combating them. On another hand, he's funding them. On one hand, his supporters don't like Bill Gates. On another hand, Trump allegedly offered Bill Gates a position in the government. On one hand, Trump's fighting Fauci with his mouth, but in reality, he worked with Fauci. On one hand, he's standing up to the Great Reset. On another hand, he signed the CARES Act and Operation Warp Speed, which rolled out the red carpet for the Great Reset. You could argue that Trump signed two of the biggest, most important legislative pieces to help the Great Reset. Guys, there are no mandates with no vaccines. You know, when you're rushing vaccines and funneling money to them, that like that's the first step. So I mean, I'm not saying in the future things couldn't change because everybody deserves a second chance and everybody deserves a, you know, I guess anybody can change. But if you're if you think that he didn't help the Great Reset to a certain extent, he hurt them and helped them at the same time. That's just kind of what happened. I mean, I, I guess I wish I could just ignore it. Like I sometimes I wish I just didn't pay attention and I could just be like a sports fan. Like I wish. I didn't do real analysis and I didn't do the research because then I could just be more popular and people would like it more. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, he did everything. The economy was booming. It was four years of economic freedom. And it's like, literally that didn't happen. It was three years of great economy, one year of the worst, I would say, scam on the American people in modern history that he was not a, a victim of, but he was also involved in. Um, I wish I sometimes I wish I could be like these other people like I go to some events and people uh, they literally just make up an alternate reality that doesn't exist to make it seem like he didn't fail but I don't know I don't know how I, I can't do it it's too late I know too much someone said so when 58% of Americans are provably living paycheck to paycheck a 30 to 80k purchase plus tax is realistic I'm not sure what you're uh, what you're referring to but that 87,000, uh, what is it? 87,000 new IRS agents. That's pretty crazy. And they're not, by the way, they're not just going for wealthy people. They're going for middle class, lower class. Like, why don't we just make 300 million IRS agents? Everyone should be an IRS agent and then we can all just take money from each other. Let's do that. Um, you know, I, I think 87,000 is not enough. I think we need 300 million IRS agents. I want to be an IRS agent. And then I'm just, you know, everybody can be an agent and then everybody can run around taking each other's tax money. Let's just make the whole country IRS agents at this point if we're going to do that. Um, someone said it keeps glitching. My bad. Um, someone else said, why do you hate Trump? I don't, I don't hate him. I just, I do think what he did was very uh, sleazy though. I, you know, I don't know. I can't. I don't know, like in my head, I really love the country. I really love the MAGA movement. I love the people. And I just I just feel like he's the ultimate deceiver. I think he sold everybody this dream. He ended up working for Big Pharma. And then in 2021, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Here's what people don't understand. I'm actually very compassionate. So it's like, okay, Donald Trump, didn't get in office again. Biden's there. You know, I'll give I would give Trump the pass for everything. I would literally forgive him for everything he did, good and bad, and be like, he was great. But 2021 really showed his true character. He's out of office, right? He's still the 
you could say what you want about Trump, but he's still the biggest leader in the world. Like he is the number one guy in the world that everybody's listening to. So what people don't understand is it's not just legislation. Yeah, that's power, but also his voice and his leadership is also very important because when he's out of office, all he has is like, you know, inspiration and he, you know, agenda, like telling people what to think. Like that's huge power. He has more power than some media corporations to tell people what to think. So as somebody who loves him and loves his base, uh, watching him use his power in 2021 to cover up for big pharma, watching Trump use his power, telling people, you know, he is the great vaccine salesman and he's the father of the vaccine and it's the greatest human achievement in modern history. He lied harder than Bill Gates. I don't like Bill Gates. I like Trump more than Bill Gates. I trust Trump more than Bill Gates. But if you objectively took every Bill Gates speech from 2021 and every Trump speech from 2021 objectively and said who lied about the vaccines more, I would say Donald Trump, Bill Gates, as 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 bad as he he may be, you watch his interviews and he actually says some things about side effects and he tells somewhat of the truth while selling the vaccine. Donald Trump literally gets on stage and says, my vaccine saved 50 million lives. This is, a, Donald Trump's a fraud. Like, I don't know what else you want me to say. He's a liar. You know, your, your vaccine saved 50 million lives. He said his vaccine was the greatest human achievement in modern history. Like, dude, he's the biggest liar with the vaccine. So this is why I dislike him. It's not because I hate him emotionally. It's because he's the ultimate deceiver. He has hundreds of millions of great people around the world looking up to him for support. And he's spitting all over your faces by covering up for big pharma as they're swallowing up the world. He put a pharmacy lobbyist at the HHS. He signed executive orders for them. He gave tens of billions of dollars for them. And then he ran around 2021 covering up for them. That's why I feel so disrespected because I'm like, wow, what a con artist this guy is. This guy convinced me and millions of people that he was fighting the establishment. And instead he spent his entire year last year running around overselling vaccines harder than Bill Gates did. You know, that's who he is. People like I, what? How do you want me to feel about that? I mean, maybe I'm not trying to be rude, but maybe if I was weaker and maybe if I was like more of a liar that I could ignore that and be like, oh, that's totally cool that everybody else knows it's wrong. I've had on, you know, I've had on several people who like Trump. Nobody can disprove what I'm saying. Nobody really. Ha they just are like, nah, I don't care enough about people. So I'm just going to cover it up. You know, I, 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 I want to go to Mar-a-Lago, too. It's like, you know, nobody wants to talk about it. I'm like. Why don't you want to talk about it? It, it? That's isn't that kind of bad leadership when your entire base is fighting mandates and you're running around just overselling the product that they're using against us. If you look at uh, the data right now, I, I believe around 32 percent of America has uh, the booster, which means a majority of America doesn't have the booster shot. I'm not telling people to get vaccinated or not vaccinated because you're not allowed to do this on communist Facebook and YouTube where they have speech laws against vaccine hesitancy and all this bullshit. But in general, I'm not telling people what to do because I'm not your health doctor and I wouldn't anyway. But I will say this. It's just a math equation. You know, Sarah Huckabee Sanders is running around Alabama because they're not vaccinated trying to get people vaccinated. I consider even Sarah, Sarah Huckabee Sanders a fraud because not because of she's telling people what to do, but all, you know, I say make your own decision. She's telling people to get vaccinated. She's not letting you make your own decision. And no offense, but she should not be giving health advice to anybody. I'm just being honest. In general, that's a fact. Uh, anyway, uh, you go to this. It's a math equation. People are saying he didn't mandate it. Just for two seconds, listen for once, okay? Stop using straw man arguments to bring up something I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about that. In general, it's a math equation. If enough people follow in line, if they can get a majority of the population to take the product, then the mandates are doable, right? If 80% of the country, 90% of the country gets vaccinated, regardless of what you think about the vaccine, it's about the tyranny. They are allowed to mandate it if enough people follow. If enough people don't listen, then it's not possible whether they want to or not. So whether Trump mandates it or not, when the left hand is mandating it, the right hand is telling you to get the product. Sarah Huckabee Sanders is going to the least vaccinated areas telling you to get the vaccine. In my opinion, they're traitors, you know, because this is the game we're playing. It's like, you know, that's just, I didn't choose for this to happen, but it's happening. So you have to strategically look at it and be like, okay, 
uh, if they're going to mandate this product, then should I be telling Alabama to go get it? Because once enough people in Alabama get it, then they're able to mandate it on Alabama. I'm not telling people what to do, but personally, I'm glad that a majority of the country didn't get the booster because eventually this is going to die out if enough, if, if a majority of the population rejects it. So you can't possibly reject vaccine tyranny by getting vaccinated. You could say you are, well, I'm against mandates. Okay, then don't go to Coachella. Oh, but I want to go. Oh, but don't fly there. And oh, take a test. You're vaccinated? Yeah, I'm on your side, Anomaly. Okay. Then are you taking a test when you go there? Oh, I don't have to take a test because I'm vaccinated. I haven't met a single vaccinated person that refuses to go to, ev to, to events that, that they have privilege of. Every person who's vaccinated has probably at least once used their privilege to fly and not take a test, to go to work and not take a test, to keep their job, to go to an event. You know, everybody I know that says, oh, I'm... I'm, I'm against it. Okay, then then stand with me when I get kicked out of this place. Oh, no, 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 I want to go. Okay, then you're not with me, you know? So I'm just being honest. It's like, it's a math equation. Whether him and Sarah Huckabee Sanders, uh, you know, mandated it or not, that's not what I'm talking about. When you put a pharma lobbyist at the head of the thing, then you give them a bunch of money, then you pass an executive order for them, you give them a bunch of power, you sign their emergency orders, you let this pharmacy lobbyist do all this stuff in government, and then the product comes to the masses, they were always going to try to mandate it. If it wasn't on federal level under Trump, it was going to be on state level and corporate level. So even if Trump was in office, I, I voted for him and I stand by it because he probably wouldn't have mandated it to the military. Trump would not have mandated it to federal workers. But on a corporate level and a state level and a local level, Democrats were still going to try to mandate it. And it was going to be a difficult situation even if Trump was in office. But I still stand by it was a great vote for Trump because he does have value. I'm not saying he has no value. There is value to Donald Trump. He wouldn't have mandated it federally. But here's the thing. Once it was mandated federally and it was being mandated locally, Donald Trump and Sarah Huckabee Sanders were running around telling people they got the vaccine and you should too. It's not mandated, but you should get it. Hey, Alabama, you know, go get the vaccine like Sarah Huckabee Sanders. And it's like, yeah, let's get everybody vaccinated so we can hit that critical mass and, and it'll be easy to mandate it. If 10% of people listen to them, then the, it doesn't work. You get what I'm saying? I get kicked out of a freaking uh, uh, what a restaurant because I'm not wearing a mask for five steps. Do you know why I get kicked out? It's because everybody else complies. How many people complied that don't agree with it? Probably over 50%, but everybody's a bunch of cowards. So they say, well, I want to eat my sandwich, so I'm going to put my mask on. And that's why it works because enough people listen. So if everybody follows the mask mandate, the mask mandate you know, is allowed to last for a year. If people follow the vaccine mandate by getting vaccinated, then it's easy. They already have QR codes. You're not allowed to fly to certain country without scanning your QR code now. You know, if you were somebody who has like a fake card or something, which you shouldn't, but in general, it doesn't work because now they're doing QR codes in certain places. So why does that QR code work to fly to South America? It's because enough people follow it. I know people that are doing it that, like, it, 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 I'm sorry, but it really bothers me, even people that are unvaccinated, that are like getting fakes and stuff to, to, to act like they're part, you're screwing me over and you're screwing the country over, you know? I, I see it as like the most deceitful traitorous thing to do to be like, you know, I don't want to get it, but I'm going to get it to travel. I don't get it, but I'm going to fake it so I get it. Dude, then when we're all screwed over and we live in this sci-fi QR code world, you know, I consider you just as complicit as Fauci, you know? This, this is just how I feel. It's like, I, I don't think, like, I think you're almost worse than the people who think they're doing it for the right reason. I almost respect a Democrat who gets it for health reasons over a conservative who gets it just to, you know, spare themselves from, from travel. It's like such a joke, you know, this, it's so clear where this all is going. And uh, that's my take on it. Yes, Republicans didn't mandate it, but this is the game that I'm saying. They fund it, they support it, they work with it, they bow down to it, they tell you to get vaccinated, and then Democrats hit that critical mass of like 80% vaccinated, and then they're able to, to force the mandates. This would have died out years ago uh, if nobody paid attention and nobody listened, but this is what we have. Democrats who enforce it, Republicans who fund it, and like literally one of the most beloved people on the right wing is Sarah Huckabee Sanders, uh, and she's running around the least vaccinated areas of the South telling people to get vaccinated as they're pushing mandates. As a health decision, it is what it is. No offense, but she shouldn't be telling people how to be healthy. But in general, as a health decision, she's already tripping. But as a political, social, and uh, eventual tyrannical decision, she is literally screwing over her own base because 
you know, if, if you go to an unvaccinated area, the mandates won't work if nobody listens. If everybody gets it, then the mandates work. Repu this is the Republican Party, folks. I'm not doing this to be a dick. This is who they are. They never learn. They sell us out, and I don't agree with it. I'm so glad, no offense, but to the fact checkers, this is my personal opinion. I am so glad that a majority of the country did not get their booster shots. I'm so glad. Not because of, not even just for health reasons, but more importantly, if 90% of the country got the booster, then we're screwed. Mandates are coming back thicker and stronger than ever. Because it's only 32, now they don't even make sense. How many people are, are giving you a mandate, but trying to figure out when you get your vaccine. How long do the vaccines work? If you got two vaccines, how long do they work? Apparently not that long because people are getting a third and fourth booster. But here's how you know the mandates are bullshit because they're not even testing. Why don't they say, hey, if you didn't get your fourth booster shot, you can't come into the comedy store. Do you know why they're not doing that? Because most people haven't got their fourth booster and most people haven't got their third booster, so they can't do it. So now they have to expose themselves as being ridiculous, uh, <laughs> for lack of a better word, and being like, oh, you got a vaccine a year and a half ago? You can come in. But if, if a does it work still? Is that vaccine really good for the new variant? They don't give a shit. You get what I'm saying? Most politicians have four vaccines. Why don't they do that then? I'm for them forcing a mandate for four vaccines. They're not forcing mandates for four vaccines because a majority of the population didn't get four vaccines. So the mandate doesn't work if they do four vaccines. So they have to do this bullshit, whatever. If you got one vaccine, I'll let you in. We don't, you know, it's just about compliance. It's so clear. It's so obvious. That would be like them having a flu vaccine mandate for a flu vaccine that you got two years ago. What If, if you get one every year, why do you get one every year? Because there's a different variant. There's a different... Uh, strain and uh they change from time to time based on what season it is but this is how they're operating you know not literally because the vaccines are different but you get what i'm saying they don't care how outdated your vaccine is to get into it it's all about compliance so to wrap it up as the left wing is mandating you have the heroes of the right wing donald trump sarah huckabee sanders running around the south where people are getting it statistically less than other places telling you that you should go get the Trump vaccine. That's what they're saying. Go get the Trump vaccine. It's not mandated, but go get it. It's not mandated, but I funded it. I gave them money. I put pharmacy lobbyists in charge and now they're mandating it. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but go get it. Go get it. So we can get that critical rate to 80, 90% and then you're screwed. And then I'm going to run around with my hands up and play the victim. Is that not what they're doing? Someone said anomalies of Karen. I, I truly am. I'm mostly Caucasian. I'm mostly from that from the mountains of Caucasus. So I'm mostly white. And I do care now. I, you know, I will speak to the manager. You know, somebody does me wrong. I'm not just gonna let them. I'll talk to the manager. Oh, T-Mobile. Yeah, get the CEO on. I'm the, I'm the vice president. Well, I'm, I'm a Karen. My, my name is Karen Omley. I, I need to speak to the manager. I need to speak to your manager's manager. But I am the CEO. Well, you better get God on the line because I'm about to take you guys to the cleaners. Uh, you know. So, I, yeah, I am a Karen because I don't allow. You know, just like white suburban women, I don't allow people to do me wrong. You know, I respect white suburban women for that. You know, you 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 can you can mess with a guy, but you do not mess with a white woman. You know, or or a righteous black woman. You know, shout out to my black and Hispanic Karens out here too. We have we have Karens of all colors, but it's like you know, a suburban mom. You think you're gonna scam a suburban mom for fifty dollars? She'll be on the line for three hours you know, talking to your manager's managers, next thing you know, she owns 1% of the company and has a free vacation from Marriott. You do not, you do not disrespect the suburban woman. They will win and I will win as well. I am very white. But Anomaly's part Hispanic, that's true. But I'm also extremely white. So, you know, it's, it's debatable how white I am and how Hispanic I am. I've never took one of those 23andMe DNA tests because I don't want to give my... DNA to Susan Wojcicki of YouTube's sister. Did you know that? The CEO of YouTube, uh, her sister owns 23andMe. I don't want her to have my DNA, so we don't know how white I am. Am I 90% white? Am I 80% white? 75? What, you know, what is it? I don't know. I, my guess is like 85% white, 80% white. I'm not sure. Because I found out my Puerto Rican family 
they i'm not gonna say they got kicked out of an island but there was some sort of like white island in italy that they allegedly had to leave or something i don't know maybe they got in a fight or something and they sailed to puerto rico uh at, at a certain point like hundreds of years ago so i don't know I, I it's it's yet to be determined how white I am, but don't test me because I do have a lot of Karen inside. So I don't I don't see that as a, a diss. I see that as a compliment. I am very Karen. I am a proud Karen, a Care American. Someone said uh, they will clone us and dispose of the original person. Well, hopefully not. Where can we get your T-shirt? Uh, I have T-shirts at DreamRare.com, but this one is Andy Frisella's T-shirt. They gave it to me for free, so. Andy Frisella runs a few companies. You can check it out. This is this is his though, not mine. Someone said you're not white though. I mean, you could call me what you want, but I mean, I obviously am like I have golden tan skin. I tan great in the sun, but uh, you know, you can call me white. You can call me not. I don't think white's really like a thing where it's like you know. I think it's kind of like they 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 threw all the Europeans together. And then they took away your original heritage, like Greek, Italian, Polish, you know, and they'll just be like, you're white. And then you're like, yeah, I'm white. And then they're like, we don't like white people now. And you're like, shit, you know, it's like, so I'm Italian, I'm Polish, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm Czechoslovakian. I'm not Greek. I'm not like Belgian. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm, I'm not every white person and neither are you. So I'm specifically Italian, Polish, Puerto Rican, Czechoslovakian. So if I don't care, like if, People can call me white or black or Hispanic, like whatever. It's like I I don't match that color completely, but you know, I call myself golden. I'm a gold. Those are my pronouns, golden boy. Someone said there is no black or white. What's your tribe or nationality? I mean, if you ask Louis Farrakhan, I come from the island. I come from the mountains of Caucasus, and I'm I'm potentially lab created. So. Depends who you ask. You ask my family, they'll tell you where we come from. You ask Louis Farrakhan, he might have a different answer where I come from. I'm not offended. Someone was like, dude, Dirk, did you hear Louis Farrakhan? He said that white people were created in a lab. Isn't that offensive? And I was like, no, that's really funny. They're like, don't you want to censor Louis Farrakhan for saying that? I was like, no, I find that quite hilarious. Whether it's true or not, it's it's worth talking about. Uh, and it's, it's, it's extremely funny. Like, People were like, but did you hear what he said about white people? I'm like, yeah, I listened to the whole speech. Now I, I was in the audience. No, I'm just kidding. I wasn't. But uh, someone said I prefer Farrakhan over Biden. Now that would be kind of crazy, letting Louis Farrakhan run the White House. I mean, that would get a little spicy. He would try to send me back to the to the mountains of Caucasus. I'd be like, come on, Farrakhan, can I stay, please? He'd be like, to the mountains you go, anomaly. I'm like, oh shucks. Can I please hang out with with the Nation of Islam? And they're like, nope, you are a Caucasian. Back to the mountains of Caucasus you go. I'm like, all right, bro. I thought I thought you were going to drain the swamp. You just sent me back to a mountain. Unfortunate, but can I at least live in like West Virginia or Utah or something? You know, he's like, fine, you can go to Idaho. I'm like, thanks, Lewis. I appreciate it because I, I wasn't trying to go back to Europe. Someone said Puerto, Rican, Puerto Ricans are a mix of three. I know that's what I'm saying. There's black people, there's Hispanics, and there's white people. Puerto Rico, I don't know. Like, I'm curious to what my family did because I, I started tracing it and someone said my, my Puerto Rican family came from this like obscure island near Italy and apparently they had to leave. Like, I don't know if they got in trouble or something, but they had to like bounce to Puerto Rico. Like Puerto Rico is just like a shit show. Like everybody came from everywhere and like just met up and just started, you know, hanging out and listening to like reggaeton music. And I'm just kidding. That's a joke. But I, you know, I don't know. Puerto Rico is kind of a mishmash show. I like, it's like you get banished from where you're from. You just, you just sail to Puerto Rico. Someone says the honorable Louis Farrakhan has millions of white supporters. I don't hate Louis Farrakhan. I mean, I, I think uh, he gets a bad rap. He's a little wild, you know? He definitely says some things that I don't agree with, but I think he deserves the First Amendment, and I think people take his stuff out of context office. But he's one of those people where... Sorry, I'm back. I say one thing about Louis Farrakhan, and they kick me off, of course. But, uh, you know, you'll get some gems out of Louis Farrakhan. He'll definitely talk about Bill Gates, and, you know, he'll, he'll say some stuff that you'll agree with, but then, you know, people will cry racism and anti-Semitism. But... 
I don't know. I'm I'm just not that offended by racial speech, I guess. Like even if he says something about white people, I just I just don't care that much. I don't know. I'm, I don't care enough to be like that's so racist. Like I you know, I'm so over that word. Like I I just face it and be like I disagree with that, but technically you have the right to say it. You know, I'm not I'm not going to stop you from saying what you think. Um I don't know. Everyone cries like racism with him though. They're like he's so racist. Someone said the FBI is watching you. You're welcome for the great content, you know? Regardless whether you work for the FBI, the CIA, fact checker, you know, truck driver, whatever whatever profession you are, you know, everybody can come to my live stream and learn a little something. And I'll, I always learn a little something too. Let's see. Someone said the race card has been played out. I think the world would be better if everybody wasn't so offended because so many times like what people are saying is semi true. I'm not saying all the time, but like, you know, for instance, like people want to say it's racist to talk about the crime rate. Like, is it though? Or did people just not want to face what's going on in the inner cities? Um, you know, people would say it's anti-Semitic to talk about like Jewish power, you know, like, okay. It might be, but it also like might be statistically accurate if you look at like ownership of sports teams and stuff. Uh, you know, people will say it's like racist to say things about white people. Well, that's right. It's like, is it though, or or is there a point to the stereotype? Maybe maybe not every white person's doing that, but there are a lot of Karens doing certain things. Like I don't know. I think if everybody leaned into their stereotypes and said, "Hey, I'm not that," but you know, I get where you're coming from. Like when it comes to like my culture like i'm not a stereotype but i do see where they come from like italian stereotypes and polish stereotypes i don't think i'm that but i get it you know what i'm saying like they say certain people can't drive that's not true but at the same time i do see where they're coming from there does seem to be a lack of motor skills in certain areas like I'm, you, you get what i'm saying you can always be uh, uh, an ex, uh, you know an exception to the to the rule you know but you also can look at like a majority of people like you and be like, yeah, I do see it. You know what I'm saying? Like usually stereotypes come from somewhere. They're not always true. They're not always right. I'm not saying that, but it's like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Even about my own groups. Like they used to say like Polish people are stupid. I don't think I'm stupid, but I get, I get what they're saying. I get like the, the gist of it, but I don't think I'm dumb, but it doesn't bother me. You know, if you told a Polish joke, Polacks are so dumb. It's like, I'm not dumb. But I'm not going to like cry racism. Oh, my God. It's like I'm sure there are some dumb Polish people out there. Someone said white boys can't jump. Most white people cannot jump as high as probably the average black athlete. However, you know, there are some Mac McClung and there are some white people who could, who could jump really high. So it's like it's not a big deal to, you know, listen to stereotypes and either be like, no, that's true or like, oh, that's not true. I just, I think the world would be better if people stopped saying racist all the time. Everything's racist, everything's, even like, you know, everybody frames everything as like, are you an anti-vaxxer? What does that mean? Like, you know, are you are you pro-Trump or anti-Trump? Do you hate Trump or do you, it's like, is that the whole world? You're, we are defined, you're defined by Trump in your Tinder profile, you're an anti-Trumper. It's so important to you to hate Donald Trump that it's in your in your, in your Bumble profile, in your Instagram profile, you know, or like I'm a Trump supporter, it's like, what does that mean though? Are you allowed to disagree with him? Can you vote for him? I'm a Trump voter. You could say I'm a Trump. Hey, I'm a Trump voter. I voted for him. Um, I just don't like what he did in 2021. And I feel like it's very shameful because there's so many people who love him. But you can frame it as you want, you know. Whoa, late morning stream must be important. I mean, it, it was at the beginning for sure, but we kind of we kind of went off. Someone said, talk, was talking about black people and swimming. Well, here's the thing. It's a stereotype to say that they're not fast swimmers, but you know, I was with Bryson Gray the other week, shout out Bryson Gray, and he was like, "Yeah, I don't I don't like the I don't like the ocean like that." You know, like where I was like, "I love the ocean." He was like, "Yeah, I don't I don't swim like that." So it's like, you know, not it's not true to every black person, but at the same time, you know, it was funny cuz I was with Bryson, he's like, "Yo, I don't you know, he's like, I'm not, I'm not about that water life like you. I'm like, I'm playing in the pool and he's like, nah, I'm gonna keep my clothes on. I'm not, you know, I'm not about it. So it's, it's funnier when you lean into it and you just don't care. But then it's like, if you're like a black athlete, that's a swimmer, you know, you can be like, yeah, I'm a really good swimmer. That's not true. So I, I just, I think it would, it would be better if 
people just didn't care so much. Someone said, Blue it Scorpio, I'm going to try to put your thing on the live. Sorry about that. Um, last one, and I'm going to take off. Appreciate y'all for joining. Hold on one second. He said, I'm trying to click it, but it's like freezing a little bit. I apologize. Blue it Scorpio said, I'd never Italian stereotype you being Super Mario fan or anything. I mean, I literally, I didn't even realize I had that. I kind of played myself. If y'all see on the, sorry about this. If y'all see on the wall, I literally have a Super Mario. I didn't even realize I was stereotyping myself like that. But, you know, not all Italians like Super Mario, but I do like Mario. I, he's just a friendly face. He reminds me of like, you know, someone in my family, just like an Italian plumber. Um, good one. Appreciate you guys. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless America. God bless the world. My computer's like freezing and stuff. I got to figure out what's